getting started with the Maple Quantum Chemistry Toolbox 2019. In this lesson, we'll take six easy steps towards learning some of the commands in the Maple Quantum Chemistry Toolbox. Okay, let's get started. Step number one, load the package. Okay, our first step basically loads the Maple Quantum Chemistry package, and we can do that using the Maple command with Quantum Chemistry. Hitting return loads on all of the commands in the toolbox. Okay, step number th two, define your molecule. So we're going to define the molecule hydrochlorous acid, and we're going to pull its geometry from an online database of more than 96 million molecules. We use the toolbox command molecular geometry, and we feed it the maple string chlorinol. Chlorinol is an alias for hydrochlorous acid. Hitting return returns the geometry of hydrochlorous acid. Okay, step number three. Now it's time to view the molecule. To view hydrochlorous acid, or to view our molecule, we can use the toolbox command plot molecule. And plot molecule takes the list of lists from step number two, the geometry. And when we hit return, we obtain the molecular uh, plot of our molecule. You can see the hydrogen atom in white, the oxygen atom in red, and the chlorine atom in green. And we can use our mouse to rotate the molecule. Uh, we can essentially use, for example, the zoom feature to zoom into our molecule, to shrink our molecule, uh, and do all sorts of different manipulations on our molecule. Okay, so now we're ready for step number four. In step number four, we're going to compute with our molecule. Now here we actually have many different possibilities for all the different methods that are in the quantum chemistry toolbox. There are wave function methods, density functional theory methods, and reduced density matrix methods. In this case, we're going to use density functional theory, and we're going to use our command then density functional. Again, we have our first argument is the geometry of the molecule. Our second argument is a maple keyword argument. We're going to use symmetry equals true. This sets the symmetry, um, a point group symmetry of the molecule to be used, in this case, CS symmetry. So hitting return, okay, we'll actually run our density functional theory calculation. And upon return, we'll obtain all the properties of the molecule, including its total energy. Okay, so basically here we have the output, and if we scroll back to the top, we can see that what comes out is a table, and the table contains different elements. For example, RDM1 contains the reduced density matrix, the one electron reduced density matrix, and all of its elements. MO coefficient in the table gives us all of the molecular orbital coefficients. Populations tells us the population okay, of electrons in essentially each of the orbitals, atomic orbitals of the molecule. Converge tells us that it converged. Okay. MO occupations tells us the occupations of each of the molecular orbitals. AO labels tells us the atomic orbital labels. E total gives us the total energy in atomic units, Hartree's. Dipole gives us the uh, dipole moment of the molecule. It's X, Y, and Z coordinates in Debye's. Okay, group then tells us the group uh, abelian uh, group symmetry of the molecule, in this case, CS symmetry. Here we have the charges of the three atoms. Okay, we can then see that makes sense with the dipole moment. MO symmetry gives us the uh, irreducible representations of each of the orbitals. And finally, this gives us the MO energies, okay, the energies of the molecular orbitals. So all this information comes out and then is easy to retrieve uh, from a single density functional theory calculation. Okay, so now we're ready for step number five. In number five, we're basically going to visualize some of the molecular properties that we just computed using density functional theory. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a density plot 3D. So we use the maple command, the toolbox command, density plot 3D. Our first argument is the geometry. Our second argument is the data returned in step number four. And upon hitting return, we obtain the following density plot of hydrochlorous acid. As before, with all maple plots, we can click on it and we can rotate the density plot to get different angular views of our hydrochlorous acid. Uh, we can also use the zoom feature to zoom in and out on the mole molecule. Our next part here of step number five, we're going to look at a molecular orbital plot. So once again, we use the maple command density plot 3D. Now, however, we add an additional argument here, a maple keyword orbital index, and setting it to 13 gives us the 13th molecular orbital of hydrochlorous acid. And here you can take a look at it, and we can see the molecular orbitals, and the positive lobes are given in green, 
and the negative lobes are given in purple. Okay. Then our last, our second to last uh, plot that we'll look at is the dipole moment plot. And the dipole moment plot of hydrochlorous acid is generated by again passing the geometry and giving the keyword method equals density functional to tell, tell us t which, tell it which method we're going to use. And upon hitting return here, we obtain the dipole moment plot of hydrochlorous acid. So you can see uh, the direction, okay, given by the arrows in the dipole moment plot. We can click on the plus sign here to zoom into this plot more to blow it up. And then we can again click on the rotate to rotate our uh, plot of the dipole moment. Our last plot is the vibrational mode animation plot. To plot the vibrational modes, we want to first optimize the geometry of hydrochlorous acid. We do that with the command geometry optimization. That takes the initial geometry and outputs a final optimized geometry. Second, we use the command vibrational modes to take that optimized geometry and produce the energies and vibrational modes of the molecule. Passing all of this information into the command vibrational mode animation generates the vibrational mode animation plot. In this case, we're looking at the first vibrational mode. Okay, clicking on the plot and hitting play plays this vibrational stretch. Second, we can animate the second vibrational mode. Clicking on the plot here and clicking play now illustrates this vibrational bending mode. As with all maple plots, we can click on the plot and rotate it to look at different angles for the bending process. Okay, number six, help pages. We've learned a lot about the quantum chemistry toolbox in this lesson. However, there's much more to explore, many more molecules to compute, and many more methods with which to compute them. All the details of these methods, molecules, and properties are contained in the help pages. It gives all the details and lots of additional examples. To access it, we use the question mark command in Maple, followed by quantum chemistry overview. Clicking return opens up the overview of the quantum chemistry package. This actually contains lots of different sections. First, the calling section of the different commands, a description of the quantum chemistry package, a list of all the different commands, as well as other technical details for accessing the package and changing settings, some references, and finally some examples of the quantum chemistry package. Going back up here, we can click on a representative uh, help page. So for example, let's take a look at density functional. So density functional is the command that we used in this lesson to compute density functional theory for our molecule. From the calling sequence, you can see that we passed the molecule as well as options. And here are all the different options that are available for density functional theory. After a description of density functional theory, its origin and uh, approach, it gives all the outputs that come from a density functional theory calculation, as well as a description of all the options that can be passed into a density functional theory calculation. Finally, a few references and then some examples. Clicking up here, we can close our help page. So this really concludes our tutorial. There's lots more to learn about the quantum chemistry toolbox. If you're interested in more details, check out Introducing the Quantum Chemistry Toolbox in Maple, as well as on a YouTube video, as well as other uh, tools and information in the help pages.